Okay, this is the lecture video for Mat 1100, Lesson 3.2. In this section, we're going to be taking a look at slope of a line, which is how slanted a line is. You could also refer to it as the steepness of the line. Uh, we're going to look at formulas for calculating the slope, how to get the slope by just sliding your finger along the graph. Um, we're going to look at the different ways that slope can come out, sometimes negative, sometimes positive, and what that means with respect to the direction of the line. What does it mean when it comes out zero? What does it mean when it comes out undefined? Uh, we're also going to be using the slope as well as the y-intercept that we talked about in Lesson 3.1 to write the equation that describes the line. Okay, so let's first get into a formula that you've probably seen uh, several times. They talk about this at many different levels. Uh, this is how you find the slope of a line. Remember, it's how slanted the line is. In other words, how steep it is. And you can calculate it if you have two points. So this is referred to as the two-point formula for slope. Okay, so sometimes we're going to be calculating it like that. You can also just visually figure out what the slope is. Like if you have two points that you know the specific numbers of, you can figure out um, what the rise is. That's what this difference is. When you subtract your two y values, that is also known as the rise. And that would be the top of your fraction. And then if you figure out how many spaces there are from this number until you get right back on the line again. So if you have two points on a line, let's say you're concentrating on these two points, you would <clears throat> rise up from that point until you get level with this other point because you're trying to move between these two points right here. So you're standing on one point on the line. You rise up until you get to the same height as the other point, and then you do your run. So however many spaces there are between here and here, that's known as your run, and that represents the difference on the bottom. So the difference between your y values, that's called the rise, the difference between your x values, that's your run. So here you'd be actually plugging it into a formula, whereas as if you're looking at a graph, when you're looking at a graph, you're just sliding your fingers and counting these grid marks in order to get the slope. <clears throat> so it depends what you've been given for the problem. I want you to know the relationship of the sign or the values that you get when you get a slope. It can come out positive. And when it comes out positive, that means the graph climbs upward and to the right. This is also known as an increasing line. It climbs upward and to the right. That will always be how the graph looks when your slope is positive. Okay, then we also have uh, situations where the um, slope comes out negative. When the slope comes out negative, the line will reach for the negative numbers. In other words, it will climb upward and to the left when the slope comes out negative. Sometimes you'll go to do your slope, and if your y values are the same, I mean, the only way of all of these answers come from a fraction. That's why the formula is given to you in fraction form. So the only way that a fraction can come out zero is when the top is zero. Because when the bottom is zero, it's just completely undefined. It doesn't even exist. So when your y values are the same, that's what would cause a zero up here. And when your slope is zero, that means that you have a horizontal line. And you can fill that in. Okay, all horizontal lines are built out of point after point after point, and all of all the points on this line will have the same y value. 
Okay, plugging in two y values that are the same will cause a zero on the top, thus causing the entire fraction to be zero. So in that case, your slope would come out zero. When the y's, when all your y values are equal. When you go to graph it, it'll look like this, and your slope calculation will come out zero. When your x's are equal, the values that get plugged in on the bottom of this formula right here, if your two x values are equal, you'll have one minus the same x value. You'll get a zero down here, and that'll make this whole fraction undefined. Any fraction that has a zero on the bottom, when there's a zero down here, the entire fraction is undefined. In fact, your calculator will shut down when you try to do it. It'll quit on you. It'll give you an error message depending on what kind of calculator you have. Okay, so that is an indication when the x's are the same, when all your x's are the same, that means that you are dealing with a vertical line. Okay, so just a scenario, um, the scena various scenarios that you can expect to happen as you go to do your slope calculations and what the graphs, the corresponding graphs will look like when the graph, when the slope comes out positive, it'll look like this, negative, it'll look like this, slope comes out zero, when you go to plot the points, it'll look like this, and when your slope comes out undefined because you have a zero in the denominator, then when you go to plot the points, they will all be lined up vertically. Okay, terminology that is sometimes used in, um, in other books, depending on which book you're in. Subtracting the y's, that is the change in y's the change in your y values as you move from point to point and the change in the x's is when you're doing this um, different when you're finding the difference of the x's when you're finding the difference of the y's we can also refer to that as the change in the y values this is also known as the rate of change slope is uh, called that in many math books depending on what level the math book is at so you see that same grid that we used in a previous section where you have a certain number of pizzas and you have the cost that goes with that. These values, um, you can see them already. I explained to you how I got them in a previous section. I just noticed that from here to here, when you take this number and subtract this number, that it was a consistent $2.60. And I confirmed that by doing this. This value, 1030 minus this, in the previous section, and confirmed that it was a consistent change every time, which is what gave me all these values, 1290, 1550, and if you added 260 again, you would get $18.10. So that gave me a full list of values. So when you are um, doing the slope, if you wanted to do the slope here, you can choose any two points. Choose any two points. I'm going to choose the smaller ones, 0, 5, 10. It's going to keep it small. And you'll get the same answer no matter what two points you pick. And 1, 7, 70. And I'm going to test it out in the slope formula. So if I'm finding slope, this is one way to do it, and it is the easiest way to do it when there are decimals involved. So um, the formula, I would always write the formula first because this helps you to get focus and gives you kind of like um, a recipe of what to do. I suggest putting in the minus signs first just in case you have negatives that are going to be plugged in on top of that. That will help you 
to remember that you have minuses in the formula and perhaps negatives that you're plugging in. Now in this particular problem we don't, but I think it is a very good habit to get into to cut down on mistakes. Okay, so I am plugging in my two y values at the top. Now y2 minus y1 does not mean, and a lot of students mistakenly believe this, they think that you have to use this uh, y value over here. They think that y2 means go to the second y value that you were given and use that one first. That's not what it means. This just means that you have two different y values. So they called one of them y2 and the other one y1. You'll get the same answer whether you use this one first and this one second or whether you use that one first and that one second. Same answer. What you do have to remember is to move in the same direction when you're subtracting your y's as when you're subtracting your x's because if you switch direction in the middle of the problem, you are going to get a different answer. So make sure you don't do that. I'm going to move this way in this direction from here to here when I do my y's as well as my x's. This formula says that you are subtracting the y's on the top and I choose to use this one first and this one second. So I'm going to move in that same direction when I do my x's on the bottom. And you can even try doing it the other way. You'll see you get the same answer. Okay, so it's this y minus this y, and therefore I'm going to do, I'm going to move in the same direction when I do my x's. This x, then this x. Okay, this gives me negative 260 at the top and negative 1 at the bottom. These negatives cancel, leaving you with 260. So that's the slope. Okay, so we have found the slope, and then we're going to interpret it. Okay, what this means Okay, so uh, this 260, remember, remember that this is all about the y values up here. So says the formula. You're using the y values at the top and the x's at the bottom. So we're going to try and put this in sentence form every time we do an interpretation. Okay, so when the, the y values change, the cost changes... And the change is indicated by this difference. When you subtract two values, you are talking about how something is changing when you find the difference of two values. That's why this is also called the rate of change. So when the cost changes by the cost changes by two dollars and sixty cents every time the number of pizzas changes. Again, I'm using the descriptions on the x and y axis when I refer to these numbers. In this formula, we talk about y's at the top. So when I talk about this uh, 260, I'm going to um, use the phrase that's on the y axis. If I'm talking about y's, I'm going to use the description on the y-axis, which is cost. In other words, in the same sentence where I talk about the 260, I'm going to mention cost. As, and I'm saying the word changes because we are finding differences. You're, you're talking about how something is changing when you find a difference. So the cost changes by $2.60 every time the number of pizzas changes by one. Okay, so when I talked about this value of one, which is all about the x's, I got, I got this one, this value of one, by subtracting the x's. So if I'm going to talk about the x's, I want to use the expression on the x-axis. Students get a little bit confused about 
how to talk, um, how to explain it or interpret what a particular value means. They can give the value just fine, but then have a hard time on how to change it into um, word form, into verbal format. Okay, so I have just found the slope and also interpreted it. Moving to the next page. Okay, the next page says, next problem, example says, find the slope of the line that connects the following points. Now, there's no graph here. They just simply want you to have some practice at finding a line that connects these two points. Okay, so the slope formula is subtract your two y values, then subtract your two x values in the denominator. Okay, I'm going to put my minuses in. I'm going to go one y value. I'm going to move this way. I just tend to move this way, but you can start here and move back this way if that's the way you want to do it. But move in the same direction when you do the y's as well as the x's. So my y values are 10 if I'm starting here and 30. And if I'm going to move in that same direction with my x's, my x's would be 3 and 8. Okay, 10 take away 30 is negative 20, 3 take away 8 is negative 5, and then your overall slope is positive 4. When the slope is positive, every time it's positive, that means if you were to go and plot these points, your line would climb upward and to the right. It always climbs upward and to the right, the line formed by plotting these two points and connecting them when the slope is positive. There's a little summary of that on the previous page. <clears throat> okay, next example, find the slope of a line that connects these points. So back to the formula, I'm going to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, um, I'm going to move both ways this time, just so you can see that the answer comes out the same both ways. If you're moving this way, then that means I'm grabbing these numbers first, then these numbers after that. So 7 and negative 8 go at the top. This is where putting the minus signs from the formula comes in handy, so you don't think that that is all you need. You actually have two negatives on the top. You have the minuses from the formula, and when you go and plug in the numbers, there comes a double negative. And that's because you had the minus from the formula and the negative from the actual number. Continuing to move in this direction, I get negative 1 and 4 for my x's. Notice that this answer comes out to be, let's clean it up, 7 plus 8, because you have a double negative on the top, and that's equivalent to a single positive. And then here, this is not a double negative. A double negative is a negative directly followed by another negative without any number separating them. This would be entered in the calculator. The first negative gets entered with this symbol. A lot of students don't know this. Not a lot, but some students don't know this, and so they don't get the right answer even when they enter it on the calculator. So that first um, negative that you see there, right, negative 1, you put the negative on that number with this, negative 1. negative 1. Then when you go to enter the other number, then you enter it with the minus key, minus 4. So that would just be entered right here, minus 4. And there's the other number. You press it and you get negative 5. <clears throat> okay, so 7 plus 8, that's equal to 15 over negative over negative 5, and that turns out to be, so you have 15 on the top, negative 5 on the bottom, negative 3. So anytime your slope comes out negative, that means if you were to plot these points and connect the points, your line would be like this. It would go in the opposite direction. Okay, lines that have negative slopes, uh, as we've got right here, um, always go upward and to the left. <clears throat> okay, in this particular problem, it says a bucket is being filled with water. 
The graph below shows the water height in millimeters versus the time the water has been running in seconds. So you have time in seconds down here at the bottom, and you have height um, in millimeters coming up the y-axis. So you know you can darken these in if you'd like. And so on. They're just going in, in increments of five, coming up the side. And then they're going in increments of one along the x-axis. Okay. So how much does the height of the water increase for each second the water is running? What is the slope of the line? Okay. So look, for each second that the water is um, how much does the height of the water increase uh, for each second that the water is running? So for each second that the water is running, if it's w running one second, it's going up five. If it's two seconds, it's um, going to a height of 10. If it's going three seconds, it's going to a height of 15. So for each second, um, this height is rising by five. It keeps jumping five millimeters. So each second the water rises five millimeters. What is the slope? And this slope is going to confirm that answer. Okay, slope is you take any two y coordinates that you like, any two, subtract them, and then the corresponding x's and subtract them at the bottom. So I think I'm going to use this pair right here, which is 1, 5. <clears throat> That's a point on the line. 1, 5. And you can use anything you want. And I'm also going to use 3, 15. Just point out, you know, or, you know, eyeball two points that are on the line. And go ahead and do the slope. Okay, if I subtract these two y values going this way, it would be 15 and 5 at the top. Those are my y values for those points. And if I uh, put my x's on the bottom and go in the same direction, it would be 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1, which gives me 10 over 2 which is 5 over 1. Okay, so what is the slope? 5. Now they've already interpreted it for you right here. They put it in word form, what that actually means. Okay, for each second, they're using the title on the x-axis when they're talking about um, time. For each second, the water is rising by five millimeters, and that's what that slope meant. Okay, now moving to the equation of a line. How do you describe the entire line on a graph? This is one way to write the equation of a line. It requires that you know the slope. You always have to know how slanted the line is and that you know the y-intercept. This is the variable that all math books use when they're talking about slope. So you can just put that right here. M stands for slope, and y-intercept, we use the letter B. <clears throat> okay, so now this says, find the equation of a line with slope of 2, that would be your m value, and a y-intercept of 7. That would be your v value. Just understand that verbally it can be written using the word slope, but when you represent it with a variable in the formula, it's the m that you're seeing here. When we talk about y-intercept, if, uh, if it's part of a formula, they're going to use the letter b. To represent y-intercept. So if someone asks you to find the equation of a line, this is the formula for equation of a line. And this particular 
um, this particular form is called slope-intercept form because there's different ways to get the equation of a line. This is the method called slope-intercept form. Okay, and very easy. You need the slope and the y-intercept. The y and the x, well, anytime you're giving the equation, all lines, when you're representing the equation that represents the line, it always has a y and an x for it. These are the only things that you're going to be plugging in for. You're going to plug in for this, and you're going to plug in for this. Don't try plugging in anything for the x and the y unless you're using the equation to evaluate. Okay, so plug in for m, plug in for b. So here we go. This is the formula. y is equal to mx plus b. I'm plugging in here and it says that my slope is 2, and I'm plugging in here, and my y-intercept is 7, and that is it. You could actually go and graph the line just from this equation. We'll talk about that later. Right now we're just trying to come up with the equation of the line. This represents the slope. This represents the y-intercept. Okay, another one where you are finding the equation of the line, same method, use the formula, the slope-intercept formula, and I guess I should label this slope-intercept form or formula, you can write it like that, for the equation. I'm not going to write that each time. It's just a lot of writing. I'm just telling you that this formula allows you to write the equation of the line in slope-intercept form. Okay, so here it is again. Remember, you're only plugging in for m and b. Here the slope is 2, and your y-intercept is b. So it's 2x, and right in here you're plugging in a negative 7 right after a plus sign. I mean, I could show you what it looks like before I go to that. There's a plus sign from the formula, and then you're plugging in a negative 7. Well, anytime you have a plus followed by a minus without any number separating it, or a minus followed by a plus, the combination of these two is just a single minus sign. So this is the way you want to give it in its most simplified form. And you should know how to combine double signs. Double negative, that's equal to a positive. And if you have a negative followed by a positive, that's just a single negative. Or if you have a positive, if you have a negative followed by a positive, the combination of those two is a single negative. Or if the positive comes first and then the negative, that is also a single negative. So know how to combine those signs. Okay, here, find the slope and the y-intercept given this particular equation. Well, if you know that this comes from the formula mx plus b, then the number in front of the x right here has to be the slope. Okay, this would have to be the slope, and this would have to be the y-intercept. Okay, so the slope is 9, and the y-intercept is negative 6. Okay, moving on to table of linear, uh, table of values for a linear function is shown below. Find the slope, the y-intercept, and the equation. So now we're tying everything that we've done in this section together using this table. Okay, so the slope, so the slope, we're going to use the slope formula. You may use any two points you want. I love to use anything with a zero just because it's really easy to use. By the way, this is your y-intercept. That point that has an x-partner of zero is known as the y-intercept. I already have one of the answers. And I think I'm also going to use this 2, 2. Again, you can pick 
any two points you like. If you don't want to use the same values that I'm using, use whatever you want. Just make sure to uh, plug it into the slope formula properly. That formula goes like this. So I'm going to plug in right there. I'm going to get myself set up by putting my minus signs in and then just follow the recipe. Y is at the top. I'm going to move this way. So I'm going to go negative 4 minus the other Y value, which is 2. I'm going to move in the same direction when I go grab my X values for the bottom, which are 0 and 2. 0 and 2. So this is negative 4 take away 2. You can put that in your calculator if you'd like divided by, clean this up a little bit, and then 0 take away 2 is negative 2, so that slope turned out to be 3. And you put this divided by this, well you can just do it in your head. So the slope is 3. What is the equation of the line that all of these points are on? Well, you use the formula. It's y is equal to mx plus b. This is how you get the equation of a line using the slope-intercept formula. In other words, all you need to know is the slope and the y-intercept. So it's y is equal to um, mx, slope times x. My slope was right here. And my y-intercept, that's what the plus b is. My y-intercept, I pointed out at the beginning of the problem, is negative 4. You might want to write it in a little cleaner fashion. And that would be to write it as 3x minus 4. As I pointed out, a positive uh, followed by a negative combines into just a single positive. So that would be written as 3x minus 4. Okay, let's see if there's anything else here, and that is it for section 3.2.